Welcome to the Sykes & Company PA video blog featuring Alan Sykes. What are the new trends that you saw at the event? This group uh, was certainly far more engaged with respect to their interest in uh, opening stores or establishing, uh, frankly, new startup uh, pharmacies. And, and I think if there's one trend to specifically answer your question, I'm somewhat amazed at is that I'm seeing a lot of pharmacists really wanting to open new organically grown stores, um, much more so than several years ago, primarily because a lot of the older age pharmacists, which average age of the pharmacists in this country is probably in their early 60s, they're not selling their pharmacies. They're keeping them, um, mostly because they don't have retirement plans in, in uh where they need to be. They don't have the resources uh, to, to, to live out their lives the way they uh, intended maybe 20 or 30 years ago, and they're, they're A, loving their profession, and B, needing the income. So the, the takeaway trend there is that as a result of that, the pharmacy transitions, while there are still probably 1,200 plus a year in the country out of 24,000 independents that uh, the NCPA says are in the country, uh, the trend is I'm seeing more new pharmacies being formed on a standalone basis, which within itself is potentially somewhat problematic. A lot of pharmacists that are working with big box uh, retailers are uh, seeing that they don't want to work the eight-hour shifts. Uh, they want to be their own owner and an entrepreneur uh, and participate in potential incremental income over a period of time and they're they're continually doing their research and due diligence in their community as they want to be um so i, I would say probably big box uh, pharmacists moving towards uh independent community-minded pharmacies uh, in, in their areas uh would be a trend now i'm typically talking about non-urban areas i'm typically talking about heartland america tell me the topic that you presented on this weekend we talk about the uh, accounting and tax issues that a new pharmacy needs to be concerned about, the formation of the entity, which entity they need to consider, what the options are, what makes the most sense. Talk about the how the accounting can be done in a fashion using cloud-based resources to strip costs out of the back office of a pharmacy so the pharmacist can concentrate on uh, increasing relationships with patients and increasing revenue. Uh, versus spending their time in that back office um, and then participating in a um, uh, a panel discussion, obviously, at the end with the technologist, the healthcare legal specialist, um, a, a transition startup specialist, and ourselves. So we, we spend a couple of hours and in, in, in being very engaged talking with these pharmacy owners. And uh, again, anybody watching this video that has not been to an ownership workshop that is looking at ownership, uh, really doing themselves a disservice not attending this this workshop because it's it's two and a half days packed of both financial marketing technology legal uh, uh, out front I know there's an OTC out front specialist from the NCPA comes in there's just a lot of really good information that's available and a tremendous amount of takeaway materials they can take back and use for reference. And if someone is in that research stage of looking at um, where and how they want to open a pharmacy for themselves, and maybe they've attended the event or they're planning to attend, what are the best steps they can take in terms of accounting and tax? When's the right time to start thinking about that, and how should they approach it? A uh, really good question. Uh, we, we talked about that Saturday. It's uh, you, you really want to start uh, at least six months out, sometimes even longer, uh, in making a decision about the formation of an entity. Typically, a lot of those formations are typical LLCs to begin with as single members because from that point, you can make decisions and elections to be taxed in a whole host of uh, myriad of ways. But you have an entity set up, you have a federal ID number, and you have what you need for all your regulatory DEA, uh, NCPCD uh, numbers, all the various regulatory numbers you have to, uh, to get, and that takes months to do. Uh, so it, it is a uh, multiple quarter pre-planning process, including both advice from counsel as far as and as well as from the financing um, people that you may be involved in. So it's it's not we start this month and we 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 open the store in uh, in six weeks. It typically doesn't work like that. 
Thank you for joining us today. If you want more information or have any questions, please feel free to contact Allen directly.